The structure of the Patents Act, the Patent Act comprises of various sections. So, the smallest unit of the Act are the sections. The Patents Act comprises of sections from 1 to 162. We have the sections of the Patents Act. Uh, 162 is actually a repeal and savings provision. So, that is the reason we did not mention it in the earlier timeline. We had stopped at 160 because 162 is a repeal provision. As we mentioned, Act is a creation of a parliament. It takes its life in the form of a bill. The bill is presented before a house, then it moves to the other house and later it receives the presidential assent. Rules, the basic unit of the rules are the rules themselves. You have 139 rules in the patent rules 2003 and we have 5 schedules. The Patents Act also has one schedule, but that one schedule refers to the amendments to the Indian Patents and Designs Act 1911. It is a schedule to the Patents Act refers to the repeal and savings provision. So, that is not something to worry about. It pertains to amendments to the Indian Patents and Designs Act 1911. The Patent Rules 2003 comprises of 139 rules and 5 schedules. The first schedule and the fifth schedule deal with fees, the official fees that has to be paid before the patent office when an application is prosecuted. Table 1 talks about fees payable for various events. Table 2 talks about the fees that are refundable and we are talking about the first schedule. The first schedule is further classified into table 1 and table 2. The fifth schedule talks about fees for international application. So, of the 5 schedules, 2 schedules that is the first schedule and the fifth schedule deal with fees, either fees filed before the domestic patent office for local patent applications or what we call Indian applications or for international applications. The second schedule lists the various forms that an applicant needs to use while filing things before the patent office. So, we have different forms. There is form 1 for filing a patent application, there is form 2 which is the form for the complete specification or the provisional specification. You have various forms. The second schedule has 31 forms and it is important to know these forms because we need to understand what form can be used for which procedure for doing certain things. The third schedule describes the form of a patent. When a patent is granted, it is granted on this form. We soon looking at the form. The form of a patent is the certificate of the grant. The grant is made in the form that is mentioned in the third schedule. The fourth schedule deals with the scale of costs. In certain proceedings before the patent office, the patent office has the power to award costs to the succeeding party. If there are two parties and if one party succeeds, the patent office can award costs to, to be paid by the losing party to the succeeding party. So, it gives the scale of costs. These are the how to compute the cost so that the, there can be a order on costs. As I mentioned before, the rules provide the details. For instance, if you take section 8 of the Patents Act, section 8 deals with information and undertaking regarding foreign applications. You will find in some places the act says, I am reading from section 8 subsection 2 towards the end and in that event the applicants shall furnish to the controller information available to him within such period as may be prescribed. Now, what this prescription is, is not there in the act. What is the period that as may be prescribed is not mentioned anywhere in the act. The period as may be prescribed is, is mentioned in the rules. The reason for that is for some reason if this period needs to be changed, it can be done by a simple process of the central government making or amending the rules. It need not go back to the parliament and they not be a presidential assent to that process. So, that is why you find this generic language repeated in various parts of the Patents Act 
as may be prescribed within the prescribed period within the time prescribed. Now, all these variations are used so that if you need to change the law, there is no need for you to go back to the parliament and to get bill pa moved in both the houses of the parliament followed by getting the presidential assent. So, the rules are designed to fill in these gaps which may be required as times change. For instance, you can look at the fees in the first schedule. The fees will constantly change as inflation soars up or as the economy grows, the fees structure will have to change. So, that structure of changing the fees can be done by changing the patent rules rather than the patents act. So, wherever you find this language in the act as may be prescribed within the prescribed period, within the prescribed time, you will find that there is a corresponding reference to the details, how many months or how many years in the rules. And this is largely to ensure smooth functioning of the patent system because amending the act is a problem in the sense that uh, the procedure is a detailed one and it takes time to amend the act. Now, the act, the rules also contains a wide variety of details. The rules one at a very broad level, it describes these generic phrases as may be prescribed the timeline or the fees that is prescribed, you will find it in the rules. So, any timeline that has to be maintained most likely to file at that timeline described in the corresponding rules. The fees that have to be paid has will again can be found in the rules in schedule the first schedule or the fifth schedule. The patent rules also describes some details which normally you will not find in the act. For instance, if you want to know what should be the margin space in a specification, you will not find it in the act, but the rules does mention that. Uh, what should be the fee payable for filing complete specification? Again, the fee can vary if you are a uh, individual, it can vary if you are a small entity, it can be a different fee if you are a corporate entity. So, all these details you will find it in the patent rules. And because the rules are not passed by the parliament and because they are made by the central government, it gives the flexibility for the central government to come up with the rules as and when they are required. Now, the power for the central government to make the rules is contained in the act. Section 159 of the act gives the power of the central government to make rules on a host of things which are mentioned in subsection 2 of 159. So, the power to make the rules was given by the parliament to the central government through section 159. And, and if you see the patent rules in the first page of the patent rules, you will find in the preamble a statement therefore, in exercise of the powers conferred by section 159 the central government hereby makes the following rules. It is a standard statement. So, if you look at the rules, you will know that the rules are what we call delegated legislation. They are derived from the act. The act gives the power to make the rules and because the act gives the power to make the rules, the rules have to be within that framework. The rules cannot go beyond the framework. For instance, the rules cannot change the term of a patent. The term of a patent is mentioned in the act. And as I just mentioned, this is something which India had to comply with because of the obligation under the WTO. So, it was an international obligation that got incorporated into the act. The rules cannot now make the term, they cannot lessen the term or they cannot increase the term because the rules can only do things for which there is authority given under the act and the authority you will find in section 159 on the things for under which the central government can make rules. In that sense, this is what we call delegated legislation. The rule making power is delegated to the central government. Because they are delegated, rules are passed after the act is passed. For instance, when the patent act came into force for the first time, this was in the year 1970. The corresponding patent rules, the patent rules in 1972 came two years later on. 
but you could also have instances where the patent act and the rules come simultaneously, but the rules can never precede the act. The reason why the rules contain the detail is that there is no need to amend the act to change the details. One of the recent amendment that came in the year 2016 was the patent amendment rules 2016. Now, this contained many details on startups, small entity, how expedited examination of certain applications can happen, how you could withdraw an application and get refund of fees, various details were covered in these rules. Now, the rules can be amended any number of times and as I mentioned because it can be done by the central government and there is no need to seek a file to pass a bill before the parliament, it becomes easier for them to pass the changes by way of amending the rules and we have already seen that there are cases where the act will not mention the details, the act will just broadly phrase it in a broad language as may be prescribed within the time prescribed and the details will be mentioned in the corresponding rules. Uh, this gives the patent office and the patent system the operational flexibility and as I mentioned before the rules cannot exceed the mandate of the act.